Hey everybody, it's Dr. Walt Jernigan. And as I've explained with you before, I can't be in class today, but I have made this lecture and lesson available on YouTube. You need to watch these and take notes. We'll go over it again very quickly the next time I'm back in class. But this is PS 113, Introduction to Psychology, Chapter 6, Memory. And one thing I want to start out with is it's important to remember that memory is not like a camera. Memory does not record reality objectively. It is subjective. And here's how to demonstrate this. Have you ever gone back to your elementary school? Maybe returned to your hometown after moving away. You go up to the house that you first remember as a child. Does the house seem a lot smaller to you now? Well, it didn't shrink, did it? It was always this small, but your memory was subjective as a small child. In relative terms, everything was bigger. Now that you have grown and are taller, everything is really in its proper perspective. Memory is not like a camera. Our next slide, with the number three, memory consists of three processes encoding, storage, and retrieval. I'm going to go over each one of these with some examples and pictures. But before that, consider this. Everything, everything we've gone over in the course has led us up to this point. What we see here, taste, touch, and smell, starts out as sensation, goes up into the brain where it is perceived. And then maybe some learning takes place from chapter 5. Things that we want to go into memory bring us up to this point, where we are now. Memory consists of three processes, encoding, storage, and retrieval. Here's the first process, encoding. And we define it as transforming information into a form to be stored. Now, let me use a computer as an example. You can encode information into your computer in different ways, can't you? The most common, of course, would be typing on the keyboard. But you can also encode information from downloading files. You can scan pictures and encode that data. You can even use a voice recognition software that encodes your voice into a form that the computer can use. Athletes may encode experiences by feel. Chefs, however, may encode information from smell. You can encode information into the brain in many different ways. This is transforming information into a form to be stored. The next memory process is storage. Storage is how we maintain information in memory. Now, with this picture, in the old days, with a lot of paper documents, we used file cabinets. And in big organizations, there might have been enough file cabinets to fill one entire floor of a large building. But nowadays, think in terms of your hard drive or flash drive. Storage is maintaining information into memory. How much potential storage is there in the brain? Probably the sky is the limit. It just matters how you organize it. The third process of memory I want to mention is retrieval. This is the process of bringing back what you've encoded and stored to your mind. If you can't do retrieval, the information, well, it might as well not even be up there in the first place. You may have talked with grandparents or great-grandparents who say they have pictures, but they can't find it. They know it's around the house or the apartment somewhere. They have it encoded and stored, but they cannot retrieve it. Think of retrieval this way. You might have a bunch of keys on a keychain. Now, not all those keys unlock all the locks, do they? 
you just have one key per lock. But if you can't find that key, well, that's a problem, isn't it? We define retrieval as bringing stored material back to mind. This is also like the find or search function on a computer. When you type a word into your search engine, it's a queue, and the computer searching the internet will bring stored material to you that's very similar to the keyword. So, pop quiz now, what are the three processes of memory? By the way, if you fail a test, you could joke with your professor and say, Professor, I learned the information. I had it properly encoded and stored, but what we had here was a failure of retrieval cues. I can tell you that I tried that as a student and it didn't work. And it wouldn't work with me as your professor now. But it is a consideration. A lot of times we are tested and you have trouble bringing information to mind. You know you learned it. This is a failure of the retrieval cues. The first part of our lecture today has dealt with the three processes of memory. Now let's look at three kinds or stages of memory. And these are sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Let's start with sensory memory. Sensory memory is every sense impression that we experience is held briefly for a fraction of a second. You can do this by looking at something in good lighting, look at it, close your eyes rapidly, and you will see a trace. That is the sensory memory. That is the sense impression that was held briefly for a split second. Now, it turns out that sensory memory is pretty much unlimited storage capacity, but you can only retain it for a brief moment in time. And about the time when you can verbally recall and talk about a few pieces of information, the rest of it has faded and gone out of your memory. That's how short-term it is. The next process of memory is short-term memory. Short-term memory is also called working memory. Now, the stuff you experience in sensory memory, if you attend to some of this, it will go into short-term memory. Now, the good news for short-term memory is that the duration is much longer than sensory memory. The duration actually may be 20, 30 seconds. So that's good. The problem here is that the storage capacity is very limited. It is much smaller. In fact, the significance of the number seven is that the average length to retain new information bits is seven plus or minus two. This is one of the most famous phrases in all of psychology. Seven plus or minus two. That means a range of five to nine for most of us. And by the way, it's no coincidence that phone numbers internet addresses and zip codes are about that length so that we can keep it in short-term memory.